fights are awesome, full stop. If you're like me, you've watched Ruby or Red vs. Blue and got totally excited by the fun of it and got inspired to try it yourself. Then when you try, you spend 5 hours posing the characters and then you get depressed and you never touch it again. Well friends, in the 2 years since I made my last episode of Animation Analysis, I've learned about the theory and underlying structure that make Montium's fights so unique. Today, I will share with you how to construct your fight, so that never again will you get stuck halfway through not knowing where to take it. I have covered this concept in the past, but given how much I've learned since then it feels a tad outdated. So let's begin. To start off, our fight will be constructed out of theoretical building blocks. We have our fight. Inside our fight, we have our beginning, which establishes the space and our fighters. Our middle, where the fight happens, and the end, where the fight ends. In the fight block, you mainly have to focus on making your character introductions cool in the beginning, your fight exhilarating in the middle, and your ending a hard-hitting cool moment. Inside each of those blocks, we have exchanges, combos, and knockouts. Inside each of those blocks, we have our singular attacks. Punches, kicks, blocks, dodges, and grapples. And then finally, within each of those, we have the animations themselves. Of course, I can't just tell you and then animate a cool exchange. You need reference. So I'll give you some resources. Some things that inspired Monty Ohm were Final Fantasy, No More Heroes, Bayonetta, and Devil May Cry 4. He also enjoyed and even referenced the Matrix movies, Jackie Chan, and The Protector. Study those and you'll surely get some cool ideas. With the details out of the way, you can block out your fights really effectively. For an interesting fight, you want lots of exchanges. This is the meat of your fight, composed entirely of light attacks that either do very little or are blocked, redirected, or missed. Here's an example of an exchange. To end an exchange with style, you might want a combo. Combos are a string of attacks that land in rapid succession. Here's an example of a combo. A knockout is the definite removal of a character from a fight. So do so by sending your character through the ceiling, throw them against a hard rock wall, flying through a giant glass pillar, or getting punched into oblivion. Make it clear to the audience this character is not coming back. Here's an example of a knockout. What do you mean you're not serving breakfast? I mean... We're not serving breakfast! Huh? Then we have Monty's secret weapon, the grapple. This is the part of the animation that takes it from a repetitive string of attacks and dodges and turns it into a personal tug of war. A grapple can be anything from a grab and suplex to a complicated game of arm twister. A grapple can be used like a finisher, or used to continue an exchange. This is the place to get creative. Grapples are the most fun to get wild with, but they're also one of the hardest moves to actually animate. So you've gotten this far, but your fight is still uninteresting. All your characters are doing is moving back and forth. Your fight needs a line redesignation. Imagine that you're playing a fighting game. Your characters are locked to a single line and can only move back and forth. A line redesignation, or line re, gives you the ability to swap their places or totally reset the line in a different configuration in a single move. This can be especially useful when you're animating a Slayer Fest with one character fighting off many opponents, or it can simply be used to make a 1v1 more interesting. And I know what you're thinking. Good idea, Cake! If only I didn't have to deal with the footwork. To that I say, you don't. Let the feet slide. Let them slide. As long as you keep the camera moving, you can slide your characters around all you want and nobody will care. Even Monty did it. He cared more about the framing, the poses, and the choreo more than how accurate the foot-to-ground contact was. The sooner you start thinking about the whole pose, and not just the feet, the better. So now you have the building blocks to properly plan out a cool action scene. But Cake, you say? What made Monty's animations feel so Monty-like? Well, the big man himself actually outlined the most important things to keep in mind. Speed, power, and quality. These three things will help your animation soar above just being well animated or well choreographed. You need to bring all fronts to their max to achieve each of these things. Editing, framing, camera movement, choreo, and animation all play their part in making something feel fast, powerful, or appealing. If you're interested in learning how to apply these concepts, I have made videos that touch on speed and camera movements in the past, but for the most part, I'll be covering these topics again in greater depth in the coming months. Go forth and make sick action animations with your newfound knowledge. Go out there and be cool. Hey, I have a question. Do you like my videos? 
If you do, you should definitely donate to my Patreon. I'm working YouTube full time and I need the support to keep going. I just need 15 more patrons to reach my likes goal. Come on, we're so cool. If you can't do that, gently smush that like button for me and share the video with somebody as cool as you, <laughs> even though nobody's cooler than you. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Well, you can tell the world about this, you can tell the nation about that. Tell them what the master has done, tell them that the gospel has come, tell them that the victory's been won. He brought joy, 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 joy into my heart.